Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and welcome to our Car Tech how-to video on the 2023 Toyota BZ4X. And this is the limited trim level. Today, I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today, we're working with our friends at Toyota of Mankato in beautiful Mankato, Minnesota. All right, so we're going to start with this driver's information screen, which is a seven inch all digital screen. And uh, Toyota has included, you know, quite a few settings on here. So we're going to take a look at it and to control it, what you're going to use is the four arrows and the OK button and the back button that are on the left side of the steering wheel. So to start with, if I go use the up and down arrows, you're going to see a very familiar Toyota menu. So you got economy, you've got here to uh, adapt to cruise lane assist, you got media, you've got trip information, and then settings, uh, and then messages. So these icons are quite familiar, so I'm going to go back up. We're just going to start at the top. So this is the only screen you get here, and if you want to press and hold OK, you can reset that. All right, so I'm going to go down. Now on, on adaptive cruise, this one, you're going to notice that there were two dots. So if I use the left arrow, I can have a compass display or I can have an adaptive cruise showing with lane keeping assist. All right, if I go down one more, this is where media is. Now, if I turn it on, all right, you, there's, a, there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, I can press OK for source, all right, and I can scroll up and you can see all the sources right here. Right, and then to adjust the volume from the steering wheel, you can use the volume control right here. There is a mode button on the right-hand side of the steering wheel that allows you to also click through modes. And then there is a right and left arrow that also allow you to just go between channels. But you can control the basics from here. Now, let's go down one more. And here we are to trip information. And you notice there are three dots at the bottom of the screen, so I'm going to use the right arrow. First one is you get the trip information here. Then you get tire pressure, okay? And then you get your all-wheel drive uh, graphics, so it shows you which tires are getting uh, power and how much, all right? And then we're back to drive information. If I go down here, again, this is settings, and this is all of your safety stuff, so kind of two ways you can look at this. One is you can just simply click the OK button, and it turns that particular safety system on or off. However, on any one of these, if you press and hold the OK button, you get some more detailed settings. So now I can change things like the alert options. Do I want, for instance, a vibrating steering wheel? Do I want a sound? Hey, you can choose between the, the two. Alert timing. When does it alert me? Okay, earlier or later? And then you know, all cars now will suggest you take a break if it senses you're weaving too much of the road. And if you don't like that, that's where you turn that off. Okay, I'm going to hit the back button up here. All right, so for all, for anything that says on, you do it the same way. Now, the ones that don't say on, you're going to have to press and hold OK just to get to it. The other ones are just a quick push to turn them on or off. And then you can adjust those settings right here. So I'm going to hit the back button here for a minute. And we're going to go all the way to the end here because I want to show you detailed settings. So I'm going to press and hold. All right. You can adjust charging settings. So let's go into that. Chain charging schedule, charging current, charging limit, uh, connector lock. Uh, DC charging power, battery cooler, and you, that one is just an on or an off. But let's just briefly go back and take a look at this. So charging schedule, okay? I can charge now. I can schedule events right here. And then I can go in and I can, I'm not going all the way through, but you click this to add something. When you want to start charging, when you want to stop. Okay, just hit the back button, hit the back button again, and hit the back button again. You can set the charging current here by pressing OK. You can do the max that's allowed. You can do 16 amp or 8 amp. Charging limit. Okay, you want it to go to a full charge, a 90%, 80%, and it goes all the way down to 50. And that's the lowest you can you can set. Then it goes back to full. All right, going to hit the back button. Going to hit the back button. And, oops. Okay, so now 
That was charging the limit. If we go down here, connector lock. Okay, I can have the auto lock, auto lock and unlock, or just off. Hit the back button here. DC charging power, max, 75 kilowatt, 50 kilowatts, and then max. Those are your three choices. Hit the back button, battery cooler, I showed you that can be on or off. I'm going to hit the back button here. All right, let's go into here. So, you can have uh, an acceleration setting on here. You can have it, um, this is for dynamic rate or cruise control. So when you hit the resume, how does it accelerate? So you can have it do sort of a middle of the road acceleration or press OK. You can have it on high so it really kind of kicks down and gets you back up to speed or low. Okay. Guide message can be on or off and then curve speed reduction. So um, it will read the rotor head it'll know if it's on navigate using navigation all right so this one i believe is is only connected through the navigation so you'd have to be running the vehicle built-in navigation but what this does is when the navigation says it's a curve it's going to reduce your speed now how much do you want it to reduce well middle high or off okay I hit the back button and then right here tire pressure settings so you can do a tire set switching, okay, and you want to register a new valve or ID, uh, tire rotation, okay, and tire pressure setting, setting uh, by specific, you can have it the setting by specified pressure or by current pressure. I'm going to go back, I'm gonna, oops, there's a few more things under here, so I'm going to go down here. All right, tire pressure unit. You can have any one of these three. Just click, select them, and then click OK. Hit the back button here. Hit the back button again. Right, let's go down one more. Okay, this is for your rear door setting. Okay, do you want uh, that hands-free on or off? Do you want to adjust how how much is opening? Okay, so you can you can see the little graphic here. So when you hit the uh, remote open this is how far it will open five is the highest okay we're going to hit whoops all right so then we're going to go down here and then you can hit the volume of the door chime when it's opening okay and then you just click okay and it lowers or raises the volume so those kind of things bother you, you can just turn those things off Rear seat reminder, you can have that on or off. And where that happens is it'll show up in the top left of the dashboard. It'll, it'll show you if there's anyone in the seat and if they're buckled as well. And then down here, typical to Toyota, we've got a scheduled maintenance. And we can reset the data if we want. Okay, I'm just going to hit back here. Now, uh, then we're back to the top here on charging settings where we were when we started. So now I'm going to press the back button. And that was all under vehicle settings. If I go one more, I'm going to get meter settings. So I'm going to press and hold the OK button. And here I can change the language by clicking on the OK button. And those are your three choices. I'm going to go back. Here's where your units are. I'm going to just click on that. So you can have those three options. Click on the back button. Under economy. Under, and then you have power consumption. You click on that. You can have trip average or total average. So just click on the one that you want. We'll press the back button. We'll press the back, but, back button again. Okay. I'm going to go down here. Uh, then media. Okay. On or off. And then we'll go here. Okay. So uh, display contents under here. All wheel drive. Do you want that on or off? And if it does, then it's going to display it up on your uh, driver's information screen. Drive info type. Do you want trip or total? Go back. Drive info items. Do you want distance or total time? Okay. And you can also have average speed show up. All right. I'm going to just click back here. Click back again. And then that's to the bottom of that particular screen. So I'm going to hit back again. So for the closing display, you just have a couple of quick choices. You can either have it show drive info or charging schedule. All right, go back. Pop-up displays. So if I hit there, 
for navigation, turn by turn is you can turn that on or off, but then it won't show up in your dashboard if you do that. Uh, you can have telephone uh, pop-up show up. So if you get a phone call, it's going to show up in your driver's information screen as well as your infotainment screen. That's what a pop-up is. It's just a quick notification saying, hey, this is going on. And then audio operation as well. So you can turn those on or off just by clicking the OK button. All right. You can reset things to default settings if you have some problems or issues just by pressing the OK button. All right. Now. Let's, uh, yeah, that's the end of that list because if I go one more, we're back to the beginning. So let's go down one. And this is where you'd see any vehicle messages, oil change due, uh, that kind of stuff uh, that would show up right there. All right, so there, there is a couple other things you can do here. For instance, we've got a window on the left that we've been going through showing all this information. And then we've got the speedometer and the percentage of power used and the charging gauge um, that you can see down here. This is your regen. So you can see how much you're regenerating. Uh, and then this is your battery level, okay? So you can get rid of all that information on the left simply by pressing the back button enough times that you get to this screen, okay? And then you've got this nice, uh, just more simplified look. And then if you want that back, press the back button again and everything reappears. Other than that, that's it on the driver's information screen. Next, we're gonna move over to the infotainment screen. Uh, so the infotainment screen is a 12.3 inch display and uh, in this particular then the limited trim level this has nine speakers 800 watts including a subwoofer and it's a JBL sound system and this uses Toyota's uh, premium multimedia touchscreen interface so it does have wireless Apple CarPlay wireless Android Auto over the air updates a Wi-Fi hotspot you can hook to a Wi-Fi at your house uh, it has AM and FM, it has Sirius XM. It does have a new HMI, which is Human Machine Interface, which is sort of like your voice command system that has been improved. Um, and it does have the 360 uh, camera system. So let's dive into this. Now, uh, to start with, there, there are a plethora of buttons on here, and they're not physical buttons for the most part. They're just touch, but you do have volume uh, minus and plus, which I wish they were a rotary knob, but they're right there. You got a power to turn off the uh, infotainment screen. And then down below that, you've got a uh, temperature for either side. You got a fan speed, and then you've got a uh, mode where the air is going to blow. Okay. Now, um, other than that, these buttons are all capacitive buttons. It means they're not actual buttons. You just touch them and they work. But what I do like is that for the climate control, everything is here. Uh, even your sync button. Okay. So you don't have to go into your infotainment screen for any of that. It does have heated and cooled seats in the front. Uh, it has a heated windshield wiper park position here. So during the winter, you can, you can, uh, you can help your windshield wipers stay unfrozen. Now, it has an interesting feature right here, and that is it it'll, allows in heat um, for your legs and your feet, which is supposed to then make it more economical because it adjusts the climate system and it's not drawing as much from the batteries to run the climate system because it's pulling that radiant heat into the bottom and keeping you heated. So that is an interesting feature right there. All right, so let's talk about the, the screen itself here. So if I, you have your main icons right here. Now, I can't get into navigation because you have to subscribe. So that I won't be able to get into. So right here um, is your media. So it gives you kind of all your sources right here that are hooked up currently. And so I'm just going to go to FM radio. And I can select from a list of categories here. Okay, I can do a search if I want. I'm not going to do that right now. And then over here is where I can take a look at all the different stations. And then I just simply click on what I want. Okay, now if I want to go by channel, I can click right here. I can also scan. Uh, so scan's going to go to a station, it's going to play it for like 30 seconds, and then it's going to move on to the next station. And if you find a station you like, you just click scan again to turn it off and it stays there. So let's say I'm going to save this station and I want it as a favorite. So then I'll go up here to the heart and click it on. And now it's added. Okay, I can also quickly undo that if I want. So that's how you're going to save a favorite. Now, you'll notice over here in the favorite screen that it's got little three-line 
icons. If I click on one, I can actually reorganize the um, the order of my favorites, which I like. Uh, if I want to delete something, I click there, and I can just click that, and it deletes it. So really nice that they, they put that right there. So let's let's go back for a minute to sources. All right, so let's go for a minute to, uh, that was FM radio. Let's go to AM radio. And you're going to notice that it looks exactly the same and runs exactly the same. Okay, and if I go back again and I go to Sirius XM, it's going to again look almost exactly the same. Okay, you've got a play and pause button right here. Okay, if I click on that, it's going to bring out sort of the full screen of it. Then I got a few more uh, controls right here. And again, I can do it by channel, save it as a favorite. But AM, FM, and Sirius XM will look very, very much all alike. Okay, now if I go back here, I can go to a tune button here. And here I can actually, for AM, FM, uh, FM, AM, or Sirius XM, I can actually punch in a number if I want. Okay, and I like it that they allow you just to click to select which one you want to tune to. All right. All right, so that uh, right there is media. Now, people say, well, how do you adjust the, the sound? Okay, so for that, we're going to go into settings, okay? And we're going to go down to sound and media. And then here we have the levels. So you have auto sound levelizer. And basically, that's going to try to make this volume sound the same, no matter if you're going slow or fast, uh, have more noise or less noise in the car. If you had a phone connected, and you turn that up, then you could adjust these separately, okay, for your phone. Sound tuning, treble, mid, bass, and you simply just grab this and drag it, okay, and you can hit a recenter there if you want. If you want balance and fade, you can go down here, and you got that, um, and then that's the end of that list. And if I go to media, I can say I want cover art to display or not, and just, if I don't, I just click that off. All right, so let's go back here to phone. So what I'm gonna do here is on the screen, I'm gonna hit connect to device, and on my phone, I'm gonna click on settings. I'm gonna go down to Bluetooth and turn it and, and click on it. I'm gonna scroll to the bottom of my list and I should see Toyota BZ4X. So I'm gonna click on that. And then in a minute, I should see, okay, I don't see it right here. There it is, okay. So is that number the same as the one on my screen? Yes, so I'll click OK here, hit pair on my phone. Do I want to allow contacts and favorites to sync? I don't because it's not my car, but you would if it were your car, so then you would click allow. All right, so in a minute here, we should be connected. I am gonna say cancel on this, but again, if this is your car, you would want to download the Toyota mobile app and enter your phone number to connect them. Now, it says on my phone, that the accessory Toyota BZ4X uses an app you do not have installed. Would you like to get it from the App Store? I'm going to hit ignore, but you could just click App Store and it'll take you right to it. Then it comes up with another important message, and this is, do you want to enable Apple CarPlay? If you click no, it's going to connect you via Bluetooth only, and you won't have access to Apple CarPlay unless you go back and enable it. So on my phone, I'm going to click use CarPlay. Here, I'm going to click yes. There we go. Um, allow Toyota BZ4X to check for car, CarPlay apps on my phone. Allow. All right. So now I can shut my phone off and just I can put it in the nice wireless charger that's underneath here. But I got another phone sitting under there. So, all right. So this is Apple CarPlay. And I, I love it that it's full screen. The full 12.3 inch screen. And that, that's just beautiful. So. Uh, this has a split screen view. It also has an app by app view. If you click here, you can see all of the apps that will work uh, from your phone with the vehicle. These are the most recently used apps that you have. And then this button allows you to get back to the Toyota system here. Now you say, well, then how do I get back to Apple CarPlay? Well, now you notice there's an icon up here. So you just click on that and you'll go right back to Apple CarPlay. Okay, so... Um, Apple CarPlay, there are a couple of neat things that I'd like to show you on here. And the first one is, uh, if I go to settings, there. I can go back here and I can change the wallpaper. 
okay? There are a couple of new wallpapers that have been added in iOS 16, and that's these two right here. But if you just click on them, changes the background, I can say set, okay? And then if I just go back here, there it is, all right? Um, let's go backwards in setting here. Um, show album art, you can have that on or off. You can also set the appearance to be always dark, automatic, depending on the ambient light. And you can always you can always say, uh, always show dark maps. If you like, prefer to have that, they will always show that no matter what time of day it is. All right, let's go back here. Um, Siri and suggestions. Okay, so if this is turned on, then suggestions will show up. The other thing you can do now is you can say automatically send message. So if you turn that on and you get a text message, it'll read it to you. It'll ask you if you want to reply. You dictate your reply. It will read it back to you, and, and then you can send it from there. Okay, it'll, in fact, it'll automatically do it. It'll read it back to you. It'll wait a few seconds to see if you want to cancel it. And if you don't, it'll send it. Okay, uh, so that is, is a, a really neat feature. Okay, so let's go back here to Toyota system. And let's go to the vehicle icon. So under here, you've got some basic information. You can clear the data, but you've got trip range, trip duration. And then it kind of gives you a graph and then current if you're driving. And you can look at the history. Okay, and you can also update or clear data. So that is uh, that one. If I go back one screen, I can look at a charging schedule. And here's where I can add it right from the infotainment screen, which honestly is a little easier than the driver's information screen. But, you know, uh, at least for me. So if I go back here, you can have vehicle alerts. And there are none. So it, it, if there were, they would show up there. All right. So let's take a look at the settings button. All right. So if you've never used a driver profile before, what it's going to do is set up some preferences for you in the vehicle that if you use the same key or if you use the same if you have your phone with you and it identifies you by your phone it will make some settings for you automatically so if your significant other was driving the car before you and had different settings it will change them without you doing a thing it'll just automatically do it so what kinds of things can it change well your seat for one um, you have your multimedia settings, okay, how your volume is turned up. Maybe you like the bass boost a little bit and your significant other doesn't. Well, it'll turn that bass boost on for you when, you, when it recognizes your, your phone or your key. Um, your navigation system, your, your like routes and stuff that you've, you typically travel will now show up instead of theirs. Um, and so that's, I mean, it's just really neat. Um, the different little things and it will do it all automatically you set up one time and then every time you get in the car it does it so neat thing to do takes a little time but it's good all right so if i go in here um, i can reset all the systems here to default i can look at bluetooth devices here and if i click on my phone it says being used for apple carplay if i some reason I didn't want that I could turn that off and I could say well I want this phone for, uh, to be used for phone and for media the other place this is nice is let's say someone else has connected a phone to your car uh, your significant other you can set their phone to being used for just phone calls or just media perhaps they like, they like to run the music uh, so lots of different ways you could you can set that but that's where the controls for it are all right I'm gonna go back here under general, this is where you can turn this screen beep on or off. You can set the date and time, although you should be able to. Let's say if I go to media, I should be able to click on the clock, and it brings me right there. You can also adjust the, uh, the keyboard, and you can clear the search history if you want. You can change language and units right here. If I click on English, those are my choices. Okay. And I can have it set automatically based on regional location. Okay, so let's go back under settings here. All right, so that was all under general. Um, this does, you can hook this to a Wi-Fi, like at your home, or you can create a hotspot for it. It also has its own built-in Wi-Fi. So you can have that. It, it, of course, all these things come with an extra cost to your cell phone carrier uh, or from your cell phone carrier, but you can do that. And then that would be where you set up the hotspot. Okay. Now, in terms of the display, here's the things that we can do. I can turn the screen off. 
and then I can turn it back on again right there okay um, the ambient light okay how bright is the screen well it's set automatically right now but I can go in here and I can actually manually adjust that if I want so that's where you're gonna do that you have some settings for the camera brightness and contrast now vehicle customization and I won't go through all of these but like for instance you can uh, control your lights so this has um, auto daytime or auto headlamps on also has daytime running lamps but you can change that that auto on sensitivity which is really nice so if you're like boy my lights aren't coming on quick enough well fine say I want it bright then and then it will come on a little earlier if you turn it brighter it'll come on even a little bit earlier or you say it's coming on way too soon change it to dark okay and then you got auto off timer here when you shut your car off how long will it will it the uh, light stay on you can adjust that right there daytime running lights can be turned off but most insurance companies give a discount for that so i'd suggest you check with them first before you turn that off it's also really nice for other drivers all right interior lights the auto time off after well 15 seconds all the way to uh 30 seconds under climate you can have ac mode with auto but all you do is click on these and you can see right here what you can adjust all right so let's go back here and this does have uh, over the air updates okay so you can click on that and you can take a look at it and then if i look under here under apps um for some reason something happened you can reinstall all apps right there Okay, and that is the bottom of the settings screen. Uh, let's take a look at the backup cameras. This has a really, really nice backup camera system. Now, uh, right before I put it in reverse, I'll point out that on the center console, there is a camera view button that you can click, and it will automatically, if you're in drive, right now in park, it does that, right? It just does a 360. But here, it actually turns on the front camera for me. Okay, so let's go to reverse for a minute. Okay, so you've got the dynamic swivel guidelines. Okay, you notice that some are static and some are uh, dynamic. If I click here, I can get rid of the dynamics. If I click here again, I have just the red line, which means don't back any closer than that because you're literally like an inch off your bumper. I know it looks further, but it's it's close. And if I click it again, I get everything. These dynamic guidelines but not the fixed ones with a trailer guide and if I hit it again the trailer guide is gone and I'm back to the static and the dynamic lines together all right I do like it see because I'm in reverse it's only swiveling in these but if I put it in drive and I hit the camera button and you notice it's gonna give me front swivel guidelines as well right here I can turn those off or on I can give myself uh, sort of like from the top of the roof to the front of the car. That's kind of a unique view. Hit that again. I get the view right in front of the car without the car in the picture. Hit it again, and I get, I'm get i back to here. And then uh, right here, if I click the settings button, okay, I can have corner view turned on, view under vehicle turned on, Toyota Park Assist 3D displays turned on, Toyota Park Assist distance, if I click on that, then I can say change change, uh, change detection, start distance, standard or near for the front and the back. Let's click on this one here. A little wider view right there and a little more narrow view. If you have this turned on, anytime you slow down to a certain speed, I don't know what's right, somewhere right around five miles an hour, it automatically turns on the front camera for you. Now, if that's irritating and you don't like that, you can just click that off here. The only other thing I'm going to point out then is, uh, just to the right of the steering wheel, there is the, an up, down, an up arrow, and a down arrow uh, to adjust the brightness of your uh, screens. And then you have an odometer trip button that's located down there. All right, so that is it on the 2023 Toyota BZ4X. And this, again, was the limited trim level. We hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.